Welcome to the Thoughtful Gamer Podcast, episode 16. This is a very exciting one. We're talking about one of our favorite games of all time, the classic from Donald X. Vaccarino, Dominion, and its many expansions. Woo. Mostly its many expansions. Today we're going to be going down our collective top 10 cards, although given that it's a collective aggregate list, there are many, many disagreements and arguments that are about to happen about these 10 cards. But I think it's a good assortment of 10 cards that show a variety of different mechanisms in Dominion. So we're going to keep it, Matt, as a top 10 list. Get those clicks. I'm already worked up. Let's just go. (laughs) But before we get into talking about our favorite cards in Dominion, I just want to mention that we have recently launched our Patreon campaign for The Thoughtful Gamer. Uh, So if you enjoy this podcast, please consider giving... A couple bucks a month on the Patreon campaign. There'll be a link at the bottom of this on the post, or it's just patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. There's some really awesome rewards there, including being able to watch our podcast recordings live, which I think will be a lot of fun, because there are a lot of very bad jokes and a lot of Matt trying to turn this into a hockey podcast that I edit out, but I imagine some people will like that. (laughs) Anyway, let's talk about Dominion. I just put up the review for Dominion, which wasn't so much a review. Like, it's hard to review a game for me that's so ubiquitous in board gaming. It created a genre, and it's been around right. for 10 years. There's so much that's already been said about it. So my review was just basically throwing out some thoughts I had about the game in a more kind of loose format than usual, because... Most people are going to know why it's such a great game already, but I think there are some things we can still talk about that are interesting because the game is so deep and so there's so many different interactions that can go on with Dominion. So if you want to hear my specific thoughts or you want to see those thoughts, go check out the review. Is one of the goals on the Patreon to spin off a spin off Dominion only podcast? A Dominion only podcast? We could totally do a Dominion only podcast. Isn't this just a Dominion only podcast? No, I mean like a podcast, like a, a feed, whole series, a whole feed, a Dominion so once episode. a week, once a week. Oh hour my hour gosh! Hour. <laughs> I can make that a goal if you will commit, Matt, to being alone in talking about Dominion quite often. I don't know. I love the game. I don't know if I'll have an hour and a half of content every week about we can, Dominion. We can fill in the gaps with hockey. <laughs> there we go. New goal. I'll throw it on the Patreon at a thousand dollars. Matt will do his solo hockey slash Dominion podcast. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Before we get into our our top ten list here, do you guys have any particular memories of playing Dominion that or particularly awesome plays that that you have from the game? I mean, yeah. I do. Yeah, Bubba, you should go first because. It- well, oh, I forgot to introduce everyone. Yeah, who are we? Yeah, we got Matt here. Hey. We got Orion. Hey, what's up? He's very sick and thus sounds very sexy. Uh, ben. <laughs> Hello. And then all the way in a different state, we have Bubba. Hello. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I, I guess I can start. I, I have a, a memory about Dominion, and it's really? actually from college days. Those were the good when I, was the Yeah, when I introduced you, get, you guys to this game. There was a there's a card called Wishing Well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this was my bad memory of Dominion. No, this is a great memory. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so Wishing Well is a card that costs three. It gives you a card and an action. Uh, so it, it replaces itself and its effect text is essentially stupid, uh, to put it lightly. It says you get to guess what the top card of your deck is. If you guess correctly, you put it in your hand. Um, And there was a game when I think I was playing with BCP. And I'm sorry, Ben. Ben. uh, It's okay. You call BCP too. It's fine. (laughs) Uh, And uh, possibly some other people. But Wishing Well just seemed like the right choice even though it wasn't a great card. And in one turn, I managed to guess like, it was like four consecutive correct guesses 
and, and it let me draw out my deck. Well, it, it was it was you got quite louder funny. Louder and louder, yelling "Wishing well!" Not, <laughs> wishing, not wishing well! well. <laughs> wishing well! Were you? I don't know if I was part of that game. I, I don't you, remember. Were you guessing but... "Wishing well" each time? Sometimes. No, no, no. I was guessing random ass things like <laughs> coppers and like estates, <laughs> and just getting it right. I, I remember you saying at one point that. You liked wishing well because if you guess right, it's basically a lab except for it only costs three. <laughs> and I think early game it it's a it's a it can be a very good card because of that. Well, it's just a lab oh, that that's... works like twenty percent of the time. Well, late game, sure, but early game when you when your deck is pretty concentrated into a few different things, I think it's. You might have a card that lets you look ahead or something that put, put something on top of the deck. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I actually Combine still with don't Humber. mind. I don't mind the card late game, honestly, because you can uh, you can play it towards the end of a chain, and just wish for something that would be advantageous to your hand. Or if you've already gone off enough, like you can afford your province already, you can just wish for trash. Like you can wish for an estate and get it out of your next draw. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it has its uses, yeah. but. I like the card just because of that story. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's pretty good. Ben, you had one, right? Um, or was it that story? No, I, I, I. So probably the the story that I remember the most is I was again playing with Bubba, and it was the first time that he figured out that Chapel was actually a really really good card. Because <laughs> before this, we were like, wait, you can trash like. Why would you want to do that? Like, there's why, why do you, why is trashing a thing? And none of us really understood the mechanic of trashing. Why would I throw my money in the trash? Exactly. Um, and Bubba bought Chapel as like yeah, I think he had three, and he bought Chapel on the first turn. And I was like, well, that's dumb. I'm gonna crush him this game. And then that didn't happen at all. I think I ended up losing by like six provinces or something absurd like that. Were you in that game, Mark? Because that sounds like a story you tell. That's a story I've told. I don't know if it feels the. Fr- I think Bubba had already known what was going on. I don't think it's the that, first that's time. Kind of a classic Dominion moment when when you realize how good Chapel is. Yeah, yeah. I think there are two. There are two games of Dominion. There are games with and there are games without Chapel. Basically, that's true for any card. Oh, be quiet! <laughs> I already told that would have been my story. I guess my story will be it. Uh, PAX East a few years ago when I won the Dominion tournament. That was really fun. And apparently I really angered one of my opponents by being excited that I had won. I was told later, so I'm slightly embarrassed about that. But basically that guy had gotten up to the finals and he'd only done pure big money the whole time. Oh, wow. And got to the finals. Wow. And I think he, it was at this time when I think a lot of people thought that just going money was actually the dominant strategy and the best strategy in the game. And I just picked up like three three thieves oh. and just eliminated him from the game basically because every time he'd get a gold, I'd just take it from him. Yeah. And... Uh, alongside some other cards, was able to beat the other two people, you know, with a kind of a middle of the road, lots of terminals actually, which is kind of a strategy. Like, I'm really bad at building combos, so I enjoy the kingdom sets where it's kind of just a t- more of a tactical game where you have to play moment by moment and really pay attention to what everyone else is doing. Hmm. And that's the kind of, of game it was, and I ended up winning by like a couple points. So, yeah, there's my moment i beat big money and the guy was really mad (laughs) i think for me it's more of a series of games than a specific game and that's uh the what was it sophomore summer i think when matt and i were both interning up here in boston and we had the first whatever three or four sets of dominion and we must have played three times i think i had just gotten cornucopia so it was through cornucopia yeah so we must have played I don't know, three or four times a week and more two-player games than I'd ever done before. Uh, Because usually at college, there was always at least three people that wanted to play. And that's where I think the both of us started actually getting good at Dominion or really made a leap in understanding how cards went together and 
how to attack a certain kingdom setup and and so on. Um, but that was one of the peaks of Dominion for both of us, I think. Yeah, that's that's definitely my number one Dominion story. Just playing so often with you, like we just we just got better and better, and like I felt like I'd be one step ahead one week, and then the next week you'd be a step ahead. But um, when we got back to school, I remember like all of a sudden I was way better than everyone. I, w- I was winning like at a high, way higher percentage than before. I was definitely better than the, I was better then than I am now. <laughs> I've gotten worse <laughs> at Dominion, I think. Yeah, I, I've definitely gotten worse from the isotropic days. But um, <laughs> uh, there, there was something about um, just playing one on one so much that it kind of refined the thinking of the game. And it, it really became like a different gaming experience than, than anything else I've had. Uh, it almost felt, felt like playing chess against someone a whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. And we were staying in this horrible, crappy apartment <laughs> over by the is. Boston Conservatory in some frat house. It was a disgusting place, but <laughs> that was that was a fun part of the summer. Was it, that was between freshman and sophomore year? Uh, sophomore, junior year. Oh, okay. I would say between freshman and sophomore year, I didn't bring any board games on my internship, but I did get very good at beer pong, <laughs> <laughs> which we quickly sw- we, we quickly got so competitive at it that we stopped even drinking beer and just used water because we wanted to play more. <laughs> <laughs> it was good times. Uh, let's go on to our, our top cards. As I said at the beginning, I'm calling this a top 10 list, but, but it's... it's not. It's it's an aggregated list, which means it's basically lost all meaning. Well, and on top of that, there have been arbitrary changes made to it. They're not been... No, no, they're not arbitrary. I, as the leader of this podcast, did the tie break for the for the games on the margin. This is this is Mark's top ten list with input from his friends. This is an aggregate list that Mark <laughs> where Mark rearranged the ties. I just wanted to hear you, Mark. Oh, you you should explain our process now. I think. Yeah, basically, what I had everyone do was pick their top thirty, basically, and then just sort them into tier one, tier two, and tier three. And then all the tier ones got three points, all the tier twos got two, and then all the tiers one got one. And then we, you know, the cards with the highest number of points did better. So between the three of us, there are what nearly a hundred unique cards. Ninety two. You mean five of us? Oh, between the four of us, because Orion didn't get his list submitted because he's very, very sick and was out of town. Between the four of us, there are 90, 92, yeah, 92 unique cards. So there are a lot of good Dominion cards and fun Dominion That's cards it. out that there. That tells you something about Dominion in and of itself. Yeah, that tells you something out of 120 only... There are only, uh, I can't do math, 28, 28 duplicates? Yeah. yeah, so... Maybe even less, because... Yeah, because some had... People all could lists. have them on all three lists or something like that. But anyway, I think we got a good cross-section of interesting dynamics from Dominion. There are no cards... No individual expansion set has more than three cards in the top ten. Or, excuse me, no more than two cards. And there's only, I think, three sets or four sets that didn't get a card on the top 10. Anyway, let's talk about these cards. because I think they're interesting, starting with number 10, which is Crossroads, which jumped up the list because I played with it the other day and forgot how fun this card was, so I moved it up in my rankings. (laughs) Crossroads is from the Hinterlands expansion. It says, reveal your hand, plus one card, per victory card revealed. If this is the first time you've played Crossroads this turn, plus three actions. So it's got some interesting things going on here. I think it's remarkable because it's a good early and good late game card, but not so much in the middle, especially if you're you were otherwise planning to trash your estates. Cuz once you get rid of your estates, there's no point to it anymore, but it can be good at the beginning, to, especially to get up to like a gold purchase or a five card purchase because you can play it, get one or two cards off of it. And, you know, if you have estates in hand and then maybe, you know, get the, the coppers you need. And then in the late game, it just becomes really good once you have, you know, provinces and duchies and such. This card sucks. <laughs> I strongly disagree. It, it does. I, I will. 
never buy this card unless I have exactly two coin. Okay, you're lost. I yeah, I I mean even just plus three actions can be really helpful. And it only costs two. Yeah, I mean I think I think it's an interesting card mainly because of the actions and the possibility that you might have a deck stuffed with victory points. I don't usually go for this when it's in the kingdom, but Orion, you made fantastic use of it the other day. We had a setup where there was, uh, I forget which card, but it was a way to trash your money and something merchant, I forget. But Spice it, merchant? You, Spice merchant, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you trash... Best your, card ever. You trash your money and you get coin equal to the, the uh, unique types of treasures in the trash. So... Uh, I was trashing all my copper. I think I bought a silver just to trash it to get my spice merchant up to two. And then by the end, late in the game, I had thinned down my deck a bunch and had a ton of green cards in my deck. So I was playing Crossroads for a plus four cards sometimes. And a two cards card that's plus four cards and three actions that can then chain into plus four more cards if you draw another one is really strong. And I think we had a village type card in the game. So there were actions to spare and you just had a couple crossroads that were drawing you like an average of eight cards every turn. I mean, my deck was half green and I was going through it more hands than not, which is pretty strong. So it let me get through and find my two So my that's, two goals. What, that's what makes crossroads. It's how do you go through your deck when you have a bunch of green cards? Yeah. Crossroads is the answer. Right. Right. Well, it, and it and does something, it takes negative. something that's usually a negative, which is having a lot of victory point cards in your hand, and then just turns that into a ridiculous card. Like, you know, a plus four cards plus three actions is insane. And obviously it's situational here, but it's still only a two cost card. And worst case scenario, it's plus three actions. So you can, you can put, you could play it and then have three terminals played, you know? That, that's honestly, that's the biggest positive to this card for me i think w whenever i'm in a game and i buy this card it's mostly for that and then i figure you know if i if i happen to get some card draw out of it then you know that's that's great but that's not the reason i'm buying it most times yeah you still think it sucks bubba yes <laughs> uh there I, I will say like there are very very specific situations where you can have like a half green deck like Orion was talking about, in which case it's obviously good. But outside of that, the way BCP buys it or tries to buy it, I think is terrible. Like the <laughs> just just getting three actions is not worth it. So right. Do you also hate Shantytown? But I mean, what no, if you... not well, at all. <laughs> but I mean, like, what if you had like Smithy in there? Crossroads into Smithy could be super strong, even if you're yes, not planning on comboing it with with victory cards. So, like, what, what what's the rest of your deck? That, that that's the question you have to answer. Because if you're a chaining deck, then Crossroads is just awful, because only one Crossroads works. If you're not a chaining deck, then how often are you going to draw both Crossroads and Smithy at the same time? It's hard to say even that. I mean, in in the case of the game the other day. There was some village card. I think Orion had a couple village like. I thought there wasn't a village. That was or the maybe... point of Crossroads. There was that five cost uh, in, mm -hmm. which is the two cards, two actions. I, I guess it was just that there weren't too many terminals because I think it's it's the because you were playing two or three Crossroads every turn. You weren't just playing one, and and it was doubling up these huge draw this huge draw power you had. Yeah, and and that's how you got through your deck. There were enough actions that a couple crossroads could get you through your deck. There were a bunch of replacement cards in that set, yeah. and then crossroads was kind of the draw power that let me power. And and I think this list isn't a best cards list. It's a favorite cards list. Yeah, I specifically and, asked you guys to put right. in your favorite cards, and, not and best. Part of I think one of the biggest draws of Dominion for me is that. There are so many cards like this that really aren't great. Like, I think Bub was right. In the majority of kingdoms, this isn't a great card. But I think it's one of the better two costs. But there's a chance that it is exactly what you need and two is a steal. Yeah, yeah. And, and finding that situation is, is kind of what's fun to me. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a good two by even if you're not going for a very specific strategy just for the three actions and then maybe a card every once in a while. I think that's still solid. 
Moving on to number nine, we have a treasure card, Contraband, which I think is a fascinating card, even though I don't know if it's very good. It's a treasure card that costs five. It gives you three money and one buy. And it says when you play this, the player to your left names a card. You cannot buy that card this turn. And it's one of the few cards, there aren't many, where someone else gets to make a decision based on your play. And I think this is just a very interesting example of it. Because it's a gold that's one cheaper and gives you a buy. So it's clearly valued higher, you know, it's it's on a higher power level than a gold. Except at the end of the game, you're not going to be able to play provinces with it. Yeah. Which I- makes it... Interesting in prosperity, because then maybe you, or in prosperity, you wouldn't be able to buy colonies most of the time with it. You get to choose the order in which you play your treasure cards, right? Yes. Correct. You would play these first, and then the other person has to make a decision based on how many, how much money you, they think you have, which is fascinating in and of itself. And your deck construction and what they think you might want and things like that. Yeah, what they think you might want, what they think you can afford. But it can really combo into, like, if there's gardens in in there, if you want to make a gardens play, because now you have a gold that gives you a plus buy without requiring an action, and you can just load up on cards you need to fuel your gardens, and then they can only choose one province or gardens, but if, you know, by the end of the game they're both worth six points, you know, it's a non-choice. So I think there are a lot of interesting interactions with the contraband, even though I don't usually buy it, actually. <laughs> This is one of those cards that just drives me crazy when I when I play in a game with it because I, it's so attractive because it is it is so much cheaper. But whenever I have it, I always get into this catch twenty two where you know there's one card that I clearly want and everyone knows that I want it. So I usually have it in my hand and then I won't be able to play it because I know that if I play it, I won't be able to buy that card. I think in the way we mentioned about uh, conditional or situational cards, this is another one in that vein. Where Absolutely. If you have nobles and provinces that you would want to buy both right. of, or if you're playing in prosperity with colonies and provinces, you have two good options to buy. And in that case, it enhances your efficiency of treasures. So this is one of my favorite cards in the set, I think. Contraband, I think, only makes it because it has that extra buy on there. There's there's lots of things that you can do with that extra buy. I also think that this is a terrible buy in a two player game, and it's really only useful in a three or four player game, just because there's usually more avenues to victory in a three or four player game. Um, yeah, that's interesting. A two player game, it's all about getting to five provinces first. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, that buy is super interesting. I mean, three money and a buy. For a lot of games, if they cut you off from the high cost cards that you want, splitting your buying power up to two other ones is pretty reasonable. Yeah, and, and it's it's it, a card you don't want to probably buy if there's like a very straightforward route to provinces. But in games that have, especially with like kind of like alternative victory point cards, uh, like like one we're going to talk about much later down the list. It's a really fascinating purchase because, again, it's above the power curve, but it has or, yeah. this very interactive and strange condition on it. Or it could be great early game, you know, if you can get it on your second time through. Two-five split. Two-five split or second time through. Yeah, yeah, the second time through. And then, you know, you can kind of have your opponent guide your strategy. you like, okay, well, <laughs> there are two cards here that'll be good. <laughs> And uh, whichever one they pick, I'll choose the other one. Yeah, so it's a fascinating card. I think a really good design. Moving on now to number eight, which is our only card from one of the newer expansions, Adventures. We have Royal Carriage. So I have not played Adventures, or at least I don't remember if I have. So how does the tavern mat work? Well, let me read what the card does. So Royal Carriage gives you an action, and then you put this card on your tavern mat. And the tavern mat's a new thing from the Adventures pack. And it says, directly after you finish playing an action card, if it's still in play, you may call this to replay that action. So the tavern mat mechanism is just a little piece of cardboard where you can put store cards that have this. And basically, you put things on a tavern mat, and then when it says call, that means you take them off the tavern mat and do whatever it says. So in this case, Royal Carriage is, it's a plus action, and it's like a better throne room. 
because it's a delayed it's, throne room. It's a delayed throne room, which makes it better, I think, because you can choose exactly which card you want to throne room. I think it's strictly better than throne room because you. Well, what is um, one more? I wouldn't say that. It does cost one more. It's right. a five oh. cost. Well, you can call yeah. a card immediately after, as soon as it's on the ta- tavern mat. Yeah. So in in the royal carriage case, you can play it like a throne room if you want to. You can can play it. It says right on the card, it goes to the tavern mat, and yeah, yeah. you call it. And really, all reserve cards are is a slightly different duration mechanism that, that, that usually gives you the, the choice of when to use it. Yeah, yeah, which I think is a really cool mechanism they added in that expansion. And this is the, I'm glad this is the one that, that made it on the list because it's just, again, it's a really fascinating choice to make of which action cards you want to double up on. And I think it's just more interesting inherently than throw room because you have that added layer of decision making it doesn't quite replace itself it it has plus one action but not plus one card which i think is probably good for this but it can really it's one of those cards that's almost always useful so if you have a bad hand with royal carriage you just play it and save it for when you have a good hand and one of the kind of fundamental strategy points that i will be talking about on friday when i post my strategy article in dominion is that in almost any situation one good hand and one bad hand is better than two mediocre hands Hmm. and royal carriage allows you to have that good hand at the expense of maybe making your current hand weaker and for me that's why i put it really high on my list i think it's the best example of the tavern mat thing from adventures have you played with the tavern mat bubba yes what do you think of it? It's all right. Not definitely not my favorite mechanic, if you will. But yeah, it's all right. I like it just as an extension of duration. That's that's honestly how I think of it. Yeah, I think it's the, a logical step. Actually, adventures is. You asked me about this earlier. Adventures is actually one of the more thematic sets. I think. Oh yeah. And just the fact that it has like a tavern. The idea that you you go back to the tavern. <laughs> And pick up the the guy, you know, the, the carriage driver you left there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would I, throw out, I, can I throw out another? Well, I was, I was, let me card? mention real quick, Adventures might be my favorite expansion. Wow, okay. Maybe. Wait. I haven't played it enough, but it might be. I don't think the upgrade cards made it, but it has a couple of those. Yeah, those are fun. What else were you going to say? Well, I was going to throw out, yeah, Duplicate would probably be my choice of kind of a similar... Rat Catcher is also really you just, good. Yeah, Duplicate, you just throw it on your tavern mat, and then you can call it when you gain a card costing up to six to gain another copy of it. Just kind of a real simple thing that you can call when it's useful. Yeah, Rat Catcher lets you trash stuff at the beginning of your turn. Uh, so that's... Instant Lands lets you uh, score four, but only if you get it to your tavern mat. You know, I, oh, I don't remember that one. Which is... Oh, I should have mentioned that. That's a great thematic card. Okay. Um, so it's like elaborate to get it onto your tavern mat? It's an action to put it on your tavern mat. It's not worth anything till it's, it's there. Oh, I see. But it costs a duchy, and it's worth more victory points than a duchy. Interesting. But you have to play it to the tavern mat. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a cool mechanic. Yeah. Number seven is going to be a controversial <laughs> pick, although I think it's a really fun card. Like, maybe it's not the most balanced or the the most suited for tournament play. But I think it's, you know, it's Donald X letting loose a bit and having some fun with it. And that is the card Tournament, which is plus one action and says each player, well, it costs four, plus one action. Each player may reveal a province from his hand. If you do, discard the province and gain a prize from the prize pool, which is a special pile of cards only for this card. Or a duchy, putting it at the top of your deck. If no one else reveals a province, you get plus one card and plus one money. So that's a lot there. But essentially, it's a card that will give you really super awesome powerful cards if you manage to get provinces first. It's all about being first. It's all about being first. Which is the dumb thing about this card. But the cards you can gain are so fun. And the idea of just everyone throwing all of these tournaments... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all over the place because it's on the uh, i think it's the strongest card in the game it overall. was on isotropic on isotropic it was the strongest card in the game 
So you basically well, have to go for it, and then it's just this mad rush to get provinces. The reason it's the strongest card in the game is it's because it's, it's a four cost market in the early game. Right. It, yeah. It gives you a card, an action, and a coin. It's yeah. It's great on its own right. Yeah, it's good on its own right, and then you have this whole province thing. I, th- I again, I don't you know. It's it's clearly not particularly balanced, but I think it's really really fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. I, I really enjoy the race to get to the province first. I, I think that's something that you don't see a lot in most Dominion games because you're you're usually trying to build your engine um, so that you can just go you know go hog wild and buy a province every turn. But if you can squeak out eight in the early game in in a in a tournament game, that's that's a huge advantage because those prizes are so good. Yeah, I mean I just don't like that there are these five OP cards sitting out there. It's and a tournament prize, in, Matt. In the first person to happen to get the combination of tournament and province is going to get the best one. It goes immediately on top of their deck, so they immediately draw it. I, the win rate of the first person who gets a prize has to be like 75%. Yeah, probably. And to me, they're just the later sets that add cards outside of the supply are just better. Dark Ages, Adventures, those cards are just better. They're more balanced. You can plan a strategy around them. That's the other thing about this. You can't you can't plan a strategy around getting a, one of these prizes. The strategy is to throw as many tournaments as possible, Matt. <laughs> And, and then that, gain prizes. Right, while I'm just worked up about this, <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't think Cornucopia is any good. And the biggest reason is because it's hard to plan focused strategies. Because the whole point is to just get random cards. Tournament's the worst it's of them. not the whole point at all. The whole point... Yes, it is. <laughs> not random cards. You choose very carefully the, the cards. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And I don't hate Cornucopia. <laughs> well, we clearly do as a whole... We only have four on this whole list. Yeah, four of the 92 cards were from Cornucopia. It's not my favorite expansion either. Although I do generally, or rather, my tendency is not to have a very focused strategy. I tend to branch out, I think, more than most people in general. So I don't know why I don't like Cornucopia that much. I think it's fantastic. It's it's one of my favorite expansions. These All prizes right. are ridiculous. They are. That's why they're, <laughs> they're so really fun. good. <laughs> All right, let's 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 move on before we get too upset at each other to a card that Ben will have to explain because uh-huh. I never... This is one I'm not particularly fond of, but I understand it's... It is an interesting card. I don't like playing with it. And that is Minion from the Intrigue expansion. This is a five-cost card, plus one action. says choose one, plus two money, or discard your hand and then get plus four cards and each other player with at least five cards in hand discards their hand and draws four cards. The benefit, as I see it, is that basically it's used in chaining decks to just replenish your hand again. Yeah, that's that's the whole purpose of this card. It's to have lots of cards that give you plus actions and something else. Um, so if, if you can buy like seven or eight, that's, that's absurd. But let's say you can get three or four minions in your deck. And you have other cards that are like festival or something that gives you money and maybe some buys. You can not not necessarily draw because minion does that for you. The idea is that you just play minion after minion whenever you run out of cards that you want to play. Um, so you can end up like with a with a heavy minion strategy. You can end up going through your entire deck and having like stupid amounts of money and buys at the end. And then having a, a decent amount of, of cash on hand as well. I, I, I really like it just like if you if you can draw a hand with three minions in it, that's that's four money and you have four new cards. Like it, it's it's one of my favorite like solo strats where you just like all you do is buy minions. And it's also really good at combining with other chaining cards. Yeah, I guess I'm not I'm not a big fan of chaining strategies, so I don't I don't I love, love it. Chaining strategies. I like ch- chaining strategies, but I just generally don't like attacks. Um, Minion barely attack. It's not a strong attack by any means, but it it can be a very strong attack in some situations. I mean, yeah, but... losing twenty percent of your cards is strong. I mean, I wrecked with Urchin. Oh yeah, for a while until arriving. Yeah, that was a really weird game. 
Well, but you put Dominion on your tier one as well. I put Minion, yeah. Uh, what did I say? Yeah. Dominion. It, no, BCP uh, <laughs> wow. for Elite. <laughs> what was that? I, apparently I said Dominion instead of Minion. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, you did. Dominion. <laughs> all, all cards, all sets. No, so BCP for the most part explained pretty much exactly why I like it too. And it's the same type of reasons. The big thing I wanted to point out is that I do think this attack is super, super powerful in a lot of games. The reason being is there are so many ways to set up a hand and having them discard it entirely and just draw four random cards is so much better than like a militia effect where they just have to discard two cards. Right, um, right. That's why I like Significantly it. Significantly so. Well, it's interesting. The interesting thing is that they discard their whole hand and then draw four. So it right. actually cycles through their deck. Well, no, faster. No. What Bob is saying is you don't get it. You don't get to discard your estate. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't get to choose. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it, it does it let you. It in in a late game or like mid to late game, it can kind of be an advantage when you want to be cycling through your deck really, really quickly, or like get to the beginning of your deck again fairly quickly. It can not kind at of all. Be an advantage? You like, don't think so? Uh, the only there's very very few instances where it's an advantage, and I actually I can't even think of any. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's I, I, not probably not I, much I of a consideration. I saying. I I I, I still kind of don't really think. It's I think I think the effect that Bubba mentioned is orders of magnitude more important than yeah, any of the I'll, other I'll things. The fact that you don't get to choose. Well, having a random a... four-card hand is way worse than that. What if that? they're going for a counting house strategy? <laughs> 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 Jokes on you, CP. Anyway, that's Minion. There's so many better cards in Intrigue. Come on, guys, you suck. No, no <laughs> Minion is Minion, awesome. Minion is, Minion is great. Minion is one of my two favorite cards, probably in all of Dominion. It's it is a even, very strong card. I'll, I don't I'll think say it's that. in my top 20 favorite cards in Intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, you're just wrong. You just don't like attacks. Oh, it's man. True. I'd rather... I think Swindler's more fun than Minion. What? No. Ugh. Which goes against what you'd think. <laughs> I think Minion is probably, after tournament, maybe the strongest card in our top 10. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, moving on to number five is another card from Intrigue. Duke, which is a five cost victory card that is worth one victory point per duchy you have. And this, it's it's just one of the cards that, that can just completely change the game. And I think that's why I put it on my list and other people did too, is that it suddenly opens up an entirely new avenue of play. And, by the way, Bubba can combo with Crossroads really well. Not really. You're going Dukes and Duchies. Yeah, really, Bubba. Really? Not, not really. <laughs> how, do, how does Crossroads help you buy more Dukes and Duchies? It doesn't, but if you Don't are buying wrong, lots of Duke. Dukes and Duke Duchies... Awesome. If you dry your entire deck, you probably have at least seven <laughs> buying power. <laughs> <laughs> so... Again, it's a very situational card, but it can be really powerful with some strategies. And I think it's just an interesting card because it, 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 it literally changes the conditions of the game more than most cards. It's an alternate win condition. Yeah. So instead yeah. of having to get the most provinces, you can go Dungeons and Dukes and bypass some of the other competition. Yeah. For me, it's just one of those... Yeah, it's just like a simple alternate strategy... That is just so enticing. Just the idea that you can kind of build up your Duke Duchy empire and you can see it build from like, okay, these cards are not worth that many victory points to these cards are worth more than provinces each is really exciting. And then, then you have that whole whole battle of do other people start buying it just to deny it to you. And so you have like a mid game victory point card rush. And then before the Dukes run out, and then then you're all left with crappy decks. And <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Have to finish off the game, it just completely changes the way that victory points play out in the course of the game. It it also is becomes more fascinating when you have other alternative win condition cards out there, like Gardens or what's the one that gives you? It's worth a victory point for per 
four victory point cards you have. Silk Road. Vineyard? Silk, Silk, Road. Silk Road, yeah. Is Vineyard Actions? Because that would also work. I'm thinking of, Isn't uh, that one like no. two victory points for every five unique cards in your deck? Yeah, oh, that, it might be. Yeah, that yeah, yeah no, 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 it's not a good card. That'd be bad. I don't understand why this is a thing. Like, I, I honestly, it's a fun hate... strategy that can win and only requires buying five cost cards. Again, you're just wrong. Cards. So, <laughs> no surprise <laughs> that you hate I, Duke. I don't hate Duke. I just hate that I play games where it's in. <laughs> because, like, it's it's never. A I don't strategy. hate Duke. I just hate when I see it anywhere. <laughs> It's never a strategy that I want to do, but other people do it, so then I get forced into doing it. And, I, and then I, you lose, because you didn't do it soon enough. <laughs> um, I don't or you just didn't do a, your normal victory strategy good enough. Um, I, 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 I guess... don't think it affects my win rate at all. I, I just don't like games where it's in, because then I have to be aware of duchies early on. And but that's why it's, it's so great. It's so great because you have to be aware of it. Yeah. Like, even no matter what the strategies are, it's one of those cards that you have to be aware of. I mean, most of the alternate VP cards are like that. You have to be aware of, yeah. But I think... I will I will say that I like Duke a lot better in not two-player games also. Like, for sure, uh, for sure. In, a, in a two-player game, you basically just have to rush it. And but there are more I think in available a, in a three- or four-player game. It, there's just more variance in it, I think. So here's the question. How many duchies do you buy before you start buying dukes? Oh, that could be solved, right? No, it can't. It because can't. Because you have to also consider how many dukes other people are going to buy. So you would buy three duchies before You have buying... to buy at least three duchies. At least that, three. That's the other thing I don't buy. about. Is have, there's such an investment that you have to commit to to make it worthwhile. But if I see you buying duchies, I'll start buying dukes. Maybe. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll just stuff. buy duchies. You'll buy duchies. Yeah, no, no, no. The point is you get the race condition. So you have to consider what you think other people are going to do too. So it's not as straight. And that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Number four is the only card from the base game on our top ten list. And it was a surprise when I first saw that it was so high on the list. But upon th- further thought... I'm not exactly surprised, and that card is Remodel. It is a four-cost card. It says, trash a card from your hand, gaining gain a card costing up to two more than it. And there are quite a few cards throughout the expansions that have very similar effects. But this one from the base game is just really solid. I think one of the main reasons is that you can trash... Well, you can, you can trash your coppers into two-cost cards, which can sometimes be okay. More importantly, you can put turn estates into four cost, which is really, in a lot of games, you want to... Sh- like, that's where the power cards kind of start. Like, there's some really good three cost cards, but there are a lot more yeah. powerful four car- cards. And then it creates interesting decisions at the end of the game where you can then trash golds <laughs> into provinces. Yeah. So it's an interesting card throughout the game, and I think it hits... There's another card that lets you buy trash a card and gain one three more, but it costs a, yeah. a ton. Yeah, right? there there are there are at least three or four cards that do a very similar thing of trashing a card and getting something more expensive. I mean, then you have you have mine, which is just specific to treasure, and then I think there's one that's specific to victory cards. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there are a bunch of these cards. Romano has that like perfect ramp: copper estates, Romano gold province. Yeah, yeah, and you can Romano remodels. And- yeah. For me, part of why I love this card so much is it is one of those original set cards that changes the game. One of my one of my favorite Dominion stories um, was when I was teaching some new people, or, or they had played half a dozen times, uh, but hadn't like really gotten into Dominion, and they saw me buying Remodel, and and it was it was just seeing that moment from the other side of they're like, what are you doing? That makes no sense. And then halfway through the through the game, I trashed a gold and got a uh, province. And they had the light bulb moment of like, oh my yeah. goodness, this is this is a different strategy. Well, I think especially the trashing the gold into a province thing is is such a fascinating decision because there's already a really key decision point in any game of Dominion of when do you start buying provinces. 
And then remodel creates a second decision point of when do I start trashing the things that let me buy provinces in order to get provinces. Because if you start if you start it too soon, like maybe you'll gain a province or two, but you'll 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 quickly lose steam, and then you won't be able to do anything on any of your other turns that you don't have a gold and a remodel. Yeah, I love this card in a messy deck because of that reason of it. It can take a bad hand. You know, you have three victory cards, a gold and remodel, and you can still get a province. Or you have a you draw your all four golds and a remodel. And you can get two provinces without having to build a buy engine deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting it, getting a province without a buy, especially in the first couple expansions, I think was was harder. To mm, build. Yeah, yeah. It's just a My, solid card. Mm, Go ahead, Bubba. Oh, <laughs> my favorite interaction with this card is ending the game with it. So if you can get a deck where you can get eight coins plus a card that you can remodel into a province so you can essentially get two provinces on the last turn and just surprise end the game. That's one of my favorite experiences with the card. Also, oh, yeah. you can you can just buy a province with eight and then if you happen to have a province in your hand, yeah. you can remodel your province into a province oh, to end yeah. the You're game. Ahead? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Really? Yes, that, oh, that's I, one of my favorite. Even like not to end the game, just if I'm ahead, but they're catching up. I'll I'll do that just to rush out the end. Exactly. Well, yeah. especially if you if you're at three provinces left in a two player game, because you always want your opponent to be in the position to buy the second to last one. You could do that to just cycle a province through. And that's really interesting. I don't think I like this one as much as you guys do. I still like it. It's just for a terminal card to be a card I like, it has to be like really good. There has to be something about it that I really like. And I like remodel, but I don't I don't think I like it as much just because it's really hard to chain with i think it's just almost always useful yeah and it's a four cost card that's important too. yeah that is uh, you know forge from prosperity trash in any number of cards and you basically forge them into a single card worth the combined cost but it costs seven it's it's hard to get at that point in the game is it worth it right uh, remodel. remodel you can buy in your opening hand you have a three a silver remodel opening it's is it's very strong really good agreed especially then since you can then probably remodel an estate after your first reshuffle into another remodel then you've got two going which is pretty good especially if you can also pick up like a village and then you just have a really nice engine on just upgrading your cards every turn number three on our list is from Hinterlands and is Tunnel, which is a three cost, two victory point card that says when you discard this other than during cleanup, you may reveal it to gain a gold. I put it on my list looking back, I think because I vaguely remember there are some really awesome combos you can do with this card, but now that I'm sitting here, I don't remember what they are. No, it's really good in games that have something yeah. like Warehouse or Inn, where oh, yeah. you discard your own cards. One of my favorite strategies that I ever put off was a Golem Tunnel, Oh, and I think I only bought one other action card, so... I automatically discarded my entire deck every time I played Golem. And just went through a bunch of tunnels? And then I just picked up as many golds as I had <laughs> tunnels in my deck. <laughs> so that's... It's also a really good counter to Minion. Yeah, totally. Although you can use it with min Minion. Yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's just so interesting to say, okay... How could I maximize the number of tunnels I'm going to discard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I like it. That's Just why because I like it. It's like a puzzle yeah. to discard it, basically. And like buying a golem to discard a three cost card is so dumb, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because you just. Every time you play golem, you get like, oh, I I get buy four golds. And then a four and a potion card. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, tunnels, it's an interesting one. And also, it's just worth two victory points, two victory too, points for huge. three cost is not bad in the first place. Right. And it's bad in that it's a card that takes up your deck, but if you have a plan around it to just gain a billion golds. Here's something I don't understand. Tunnel costs three, and it gets you a gold every time you discard it. 
There's a card called Farmland that costs six, and the only thing it does is it lets you trash a card from your. It's it's basically when you buy it, you you do, you do the remodel action with a card in your hand. Why does that cost six and Tunnel, which is far more versatile and useful, cost three? Well, that's completely. Baffling. There's probably a reason Tunnel is considered a powerful <laughs> card, and that Farmlands is not. <laughs> Well, but also, that, in some sense, it doesn't. Farmlands is insanely powerful. Is it? I don't remember. Well, you can that upgrade much. a gold into a province with farmlands. Right. You can uh-huh. upgrade a farmlands into a province with farmlands. That, like, that's exactly right. You chain farmlands together. Oh yeah. So you bought you bought you don't remember this? You buy farmlands at six cost, and you just constantly have them in your hand, and you keep buying them and upgrading them into provinces. Yeah. So probably. essentially, you're yeah. only buying provinces for six. I mean, Tunnel is probably a hair undercosted, but uh, in Dominion, it doesn't matter that much how much cards cost. No, not at all. Which is a brilliant part of the game I wrote about in my review, that you don't really need to care from a designer standpoint how much any given card costs, because everyone has equal access to them. Yeah, that's one thing to look you, at. you got to get thing, it in the ballpark. That's about it. Yeah, and the other thing is that the actual value of a card in a kingdom in a given kingdom changes drastically yes, if there's nothing that especially discards cards, tunnel yeah tunnel isn't worth that yeah, much. Tunnel's a garbage well card. maybe that's why they cost it three because in a, in that's a situation fair. Fair. in which you can't utilize its second action it's still decent if you're scrounging for victory actually, points that's actually a pretty good cost it's halfway between an estate and a duchy yeah it's a good ratio it's just you know per card it's a small number of victory points right yeah all right, moving on to number two, which is another victory point oh, card. Oh, real, real quick, though. Oh, go ahead. The other thing is, I like multi-type cards. Just the fact that they have that nice gradient. <laughs> <laughs> that blue to, blue to green. There yeah. are many cards that have that. That's, it's, it's nice. Well, well nice. Geesman. We had another one coming right up here. Number two yeah. from Seaside, which my, my favorite expansion is either Seaside or Adventures. It's one of the two. We have Island which is a four-cost action victory card that gives you two victory points, but it has an action that says put this and a card from your hand onto your island mat. So you basically put them aside on their own private island. This card is so much cooler than Tunnel. So it's, really, cooler. it's really it's yeah. really good card. Well, that's it's why awesome. it but tied for the most points. I don't, want to, I don't want people to think I don't think it's awesome, but Tunnel's still better. Tunnels has more awesome potential. Island's just always helpful. Yeah, it's just a yeah. nice little... like. There's never a bad reason, really, to buy it. I guess yeah. if you're going for a crazy crossroads strategy. But other than that, <laughs> why wouldn't you buy your own private island to send your estates to? It's better than trashing them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so it's like, it's like the friendliest trashing card. Yeah. It lets you trash something without actually trashing it. You just kind of put it aside for a bit. And it gives you two victory points. I think that's why it's high, it got high ranking, just because it's just a nice card. It's just a nice card. Is it really that good? I'm not sure how good it is. Because it it doesn't have a very high ceiling. Like it's As all, a 4-buy, I think it's clearly above average It's always a 4-buy that is, costs you an action to get rid of a card. I'll, I'll put it that, this way. I always consider buying Island, whether or not I do. Yeah. There yeah. Are, there's never well, no, a here's what it is. I'm like, oh, I'm not buying that. It's... What is it? It's basically, it's a four-cost card that trashes an estate and turns it into a duchy. That's what it is. Yeah. That's a big opportunity cost, though, because you didn't buy a different four card and you used an action. True. You do, if you have another, if you have like a three-cost terminal you really want, like, I don't know, Ambassador it would be a better choice here than Island. You can't do it, but... You know, island in silver or island in like a village isn't horrible. Not you know something like a village that that replaces itself or isn't a terminal. It, it's certainly not a bad too because you just put away the provinces and you still have a good deck. Yeah, so if you miss yeah. your states, you, there's going to be more opportunities later on. And, and actually, Ben, I think you're right on in that you're always considering buying it, even like if you have a chaining deck and you're late in the game, then it's pretty easy to like get to it and. And stash that province that you just bought. I think it's in the same on. the same category as remodel. It's just always a decent buy. <laughs> I think this is this is really one of the interesting points about the way we're doing this list 
Because I think if we had done something like a, you know, give me your top three favorite cards, and then, like, your next three, if, if we group them in smaller sets, I don't think Island would be anywhere close to the top, because I don't think it's any of our favorite cards. But it's a card we all like. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I would agree. It just feels nice to play. You're oh, like, yeah. I'm just yeah. making my deck better. I got victory points, and I'm just... Well, no, the here's what it is. It's the Scythe thing. And we talk about the upgrade action in Scythe, where you take, you you make one part better and you make a little bit, another part slightly less bad. Yeah. This one you did get rid of your estate or your copper, but you also got a couple victory points out of it. It's, it's a, it's a nice feeling. And it's, and it's beautifully thematic. You have a little island of victory points. Exactly. I think, was this the first card? (laughs) Seaside was for the first set that had like other areas. Yeah. I think In so. Your island mat. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Bubba, what were you going to say to me earlier, right before we got to island? It was about split cards. I was going to ask you what your favorite split card was. Oh, I didn't have... Well, it's probably Tunnel, because that was in my top ten. Nobles, for me, by, by a lot. Nobles was number 31 on my list. I think we... Didn't we play Dark Ages, and we had cards that had four subtypes or something like that? Yes, there's a card. Oh, there's the knights that have different subtypes. I'll get back to you, Bubba. Yeah, Dark Ages goes nuts with the subtypes. All right, number one, which I think think it's a good selection for number one, even though our methodology is sketchy, and that is Bishop. Bishop is a card from Prosperity. It gives you one money, one victory point token, and then it says, trash a card from your hand, gain one victory point token per two cost of the card you trashed. Uh, rounding down, each other player may trash a card from their hand. So it's a card that actually provides a benefit to your opponents, but I think it's decent in any early game buy. It's always a decent four buy, or more than decent four buy. But you can create some crazy engines with Bishop. Playing like Bishop and Monument as many times as possible is a strategy. And just pile in. Or we were talking about rats the other day. Rats into Bishop would be nuts. Because then you just you play Bishop yeah. and get three victory points every turn. You, you have an endless <laughs> supply of... Three four. victory points. Yeah. You have an endless supply of duchies that don't go into your hand. So, I don't know, there are lots, like with Tunnels, I think, but even more so here, there are lots of exciting opportunities with Bishops, and I think the Victory Point tokens are really an interesting mechanism they added to the game. But it's on, you know, it's a, it's a terminal card, so there are trade-offs. It does help your opponents, which is another trade-off, but I think it has to have that, or else it'd be stupidly overpowered. Right, and the decision for them becomes if they're also going bishops do i trash this card now for nothing which makes my deck better or do i wait until i play bishops to trash something to get the victory points yeah 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 exactly so sometimes someone else will play bishops and like ah, i really don't actually want to trash anything even though usually or almost always trashing is a benefit to your deck right and the interesting thing is that trashing a province only loses you one victory point yeah yeah. So by itself is kind of almost a good decision. Just it can be because it pulls it out of your deck for minus one victory points. But I know there are some combos that I played before where you can just go nuts with, with Bishop and just get a massive pile of, of victory point tokens. I think the Rats one is, is the most intriguing, but yeah, there, there are just a lot of options. What I kind of like about Bishop is that it, it doesn't feel like a game changer in any one way to me. But it gently thins out your deck while giving you those extra victory points that add up. Yeah, um, each individual play isn't too crazy most of the time. But by the end of the game, you can be looking at 20 extra victory points. 20 extra game. victory points, and you've trashed eight cards, which is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like Chapel. It's not even like Remodel in terms of like instantly turning bad cards into okay cards i don't know about you guys i whenever i see bishop and whenever i buy one i tend to like go all in on it and just like trash all my good cards just for all the points yeah i mean that's the only thing you could do but i've had i've had good experience with it just using it selectively and getting you know maybe 10 points by the end of the game out of it 
but having it subtly help. It's here's what I think it is. I think it's a card that is very hard to measure how good it is in any situation or any given kingdom pile. Yeah, totally. And that makes it interesting because it well, and also you, you have to make very difficult tactical decisions while you're playing with Bishop because it is right. a terminal and because it changes calculations in a weird way. Yeah, it and it's just interesting, like you can play it in a big money strategy because you're trying not to get a bunch of other terminal actions. You can even throw it into an engine deck, like kind of after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, because then you just kind of... You, you just know. play it at the end of each chain for an extra... Yeah, yeah. Points. So you might not start trashing things early in the game, but then you, you get to it most times, like, you know, most turns because you're chaining. It'd be super interesting to play with Bishop in a mostly like a half prosperity, half dark ages set where you get benefits off of trashing cards. Yeah, totally. That you would could be make the, some that would crazy, be the weirdest matchup. It'd be strange because prosperity is so big and it, dark ages kind of sucks the air out of the game yeah. in a sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fascinating card. I think it's a good inclusion at number one. The thing with Bishop is whenever it's in the game, I feel like I have to get in on the action. I can't do a strategy that doesn't at least include a sprinkling of Bishop. Yeah. Like, if I'm giving someone else 20 victory points off their Bishop, I have to at least get 7 off of my Bishop, even if I'm doing a a different strategy that's going to, you know... It's so hard to... Well, I mean, it's just a solid opening 4 by to start with. Yeah. But I I certainly think you can beat a Bishop-dominant strategy with something else. I, I, I know I've done that before. But there aren't that many four buys that are going to be a better choice on your opening your opening four buy. Well, that's our top ten Dominion cards, but not really top ten Dominion cards because our methodology has made everyone angry and created a <laughs> lot of was, controversy. That was less contentious than I thought it was going to be, but mainly because mainly the, because the we didn't talk about Fishing Village and the top four cards. Oh my were gosh! All on my list. Oh, the top four cards were all, all on your list. Yeah. Uh, the only four that I included were the top four. Yeah. Huh, interesting. I think, I think the top four were on... Top five might have been on mine. Oh, five. Yeah, no, 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 the top five. I mean, it's and only the top, five. top card to not be on most people's list. Yeah, yeah. It. But apparently, so, I either like cards that everyone likes or no one else likes. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what's cool about Dominion, though, is yeah. that you can have... You know, we could have Minion and tournament i don't know you can have all these contentious cards and then you can just choose your own strategy if you don't think one card is worth it or not or if you just don't like it okay let's let's move on to some honorable mentions okay i have an honorable mention (laughs) okay go ahead way of answering bubba's question from earlier first of all tunnel i think is my favorite split card and first of all, you have to consider the color split. The green blue color split is just. <laughs> it does look lovely. nice. It does look I, I have a more relevant. Good. I like the green white. Okay, but, but the other two honorable mentions are both money victory points. Harem. Yeah. I just I think it's fun and it's an interesting decision. Do I spend six on the gold or do I spend the six on a silver, but I get two victory points? You, you'd spend it on the gold. I used to it's get an interesting. It's an interesting decision. It's an interest. It's an interesting decision until you realize that gold is better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe late. Maybe. I wanted. I I spent so much time in Isotropic yeah. trying to make harem work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, with Matt. Cro- with crossroads, it does. <laughs> <laughs> with crossroads, it does. <laughs> That's a, uh, but that think, might be the best crossroads combo. <laughs> okay, so how about this? No, nobles. Harem, you have six. Do you buy a harem, a gold, or a duchy? I don't know. Like Sometimes the harem is what you want. Maybe you already have a bunch of gold, and so a silver is fine because it pushes you over the edge to the province. I don't know. It's interesting. The Almost other, always the gold is the better buy. Move the on. One, is your, is your final is honorable mention, Matt? Well, I'm still answering Bubba's question. Okay, fine. And... <laughs> I'm giving giving some love to Empires because you go you guys all suck and only put old cards. Well, on Well, Baba hasn't played Empires. Okay. I tried to add Empires so, cards. Empires has a mixed pile called Castles, and the Castles pile are all victory cards, but they're all slightly different, and they are placed in ascending order of cost. So the first castle is called the Humble Castle. Cost three. It's a um, it's a one, it's a copper basically. 
but it's worth one victory point per castle in your deck. So all the castles kind of have interesting side effects. So it's an interesting strategy. Yeah. Castles, castles are fun. Castles. Yeah. Although I think I like the the adventures uh, progressive cards where you start with like the page and you end up at the knight or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like four or five cards along the way, and every time you discard one, you you can gain the other one. It's super thematic, and I think that it's just a really fun. And I think they're stronger than maybe the castles. I think they're stronger strategy. for sure. For some reason, I don't. I'm not, I don't gravitate them I, to them. I, well, I think one right. of the two is is definitely better. And then the other the other similar thing are the knights from Adventures. I think Dark Ages. Dark Ages. That's right. And so they're like castles really the powerful. Well, well the knights cards. are also super thematic because it's just a bunch of different knights. And then they just battle each other throughout the game. Yeah. And f- kill each other off. Right. <laughs> as people play them. Oh, yeah. I remember you guys both went for knights and I avoided that. And your knights killed no. each other. Mark went for knights. <laughs> you he bought like two knights. all of my gold. And what did you lose? You probably lost like a village or something. I lost a couple like three cost action cards. Yeah. That I needed to get rid of anyways. That was my, that was my crossroads game, I think. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Yes, it was. So Crossroads was great because it avoided the night range. It was a two-cost card that gave me a bunch of cards. That was a perfect Dominion game because the three of us took such different strategies. Yeah. Mark, you were never going to win, but I looked <laughs> like I was going to win. I was fighting for a second. you trashed all of my gold. And I didn't mean to. Win. And then I just rebuilt into provinces. Yeah. All right. Anyone else have any honorable mentions of cards oh, they really love? Absolutely. Oh, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say, Mark? The card that was basically number 11. That that's also you know I wasn't but that's that's a good one to bring up. Okay, uh, hunting party is is fantastic. Uh, what? I'm no. not a big fan. Why? It's kind of boring. It it's, is kind of boring. It's like it's not. I, I don't know. I like it. it. It's it's great for decks where you have multiple cards that you're going after. It's um. So what it does is it's it, fine. It's uh. It's it replaces itself and then you can go through your deck until you find a card that you don't have in your hand and then you put that card into your hand and it's it's a great card in that it avoids drawing estates or coffers or anything that you have a lot of and lets you draw something that's actually useful to you probably not not always sometimes i just so often when you play this you end up with an estate and you're just sad i don't i mean i think i think if so if you're going hunting party you have to commit to hunting party you have to get like four or five or even three of them is fine, but that way, like you can hunting party into hunting parties, and you can you can just get a very diverse hand. It, it's it. I, I love chaining strategies. This is one of the best chaining cards. Because it's a finicky that. chaining card, though. It's I, there's annoying. Better, there's just better chaining cards. I, I love chaining too, and there's just better chaining cards. I I, I well, I, you like cornucopia, so I like corn. Yeah, if I'm gonna do a chaining strategy, I want to have like three or four different types of action cards that will allow me to chain. And this allows you to draw more of them instead of just drawing whatever happens to be the second card down in your deck. Um, But that wasn't actually what I was going to talk about. (laughs) Uh, I was going to say Masquerade. I love Masquerade. This was number 11, basically. Oh, okay. I thought... Okay, well, then yes, Masquerade. (laughs) Um, Masquerade is a fantastic card. It draws... You draw two cards... Then everyone passes a card in their hand to the left, and the person who played Masquerade can then trash a card from their hand if they wish. Yeah. And I love this card because it was one of the first interaction cards that I played with in Dominion that wasn't an attack card. And it it just changes the game so much because maybe you can, instead of trashing cards, maybe you can just give your bad stuff to the person next to you and... It, I, I I love the the change of of pace that it gives. Yeah, I, I I really like this card. This is for a long time. This was my favorite card in Dominion. Well, it's just in terms of power, it is one of the strongest cards in the game because it's plus two cards, trash a card. I just don't like Masquerade sometimes because you get into these situations where it's like, well, everyone pass a copper to the left, or in games with attacks, everyone pass a curse to the left, and you know, everyone ends up with the same hand except you trash one, which is still good, but it just feels underwhelming to what it could be for the. I don't yeah, know, yeah. It just I, I feel think as fun as it should be. It's not. It's I, not a fun interaction for the other people. 
Well, I think actually it would, most it would be time, cool if they made a card. Maybe it would cost more, but that had the same thing that Masquerade does, but stipulates it can't be a zero cost card. Ooh. Well, that'd be interesting. That would be interesting. That would just be chaos. <laughs> it would. <laughs> what if, or if you don't have any cards that cost more than zero, like it's possible you could just draw a hand all of coppers and curses. So there, that, that would be interesting, though. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see a card like that. My honorable mentions, I have to mention Chapel. It's the most important card in the game. Um, my other one, which is just, it, it's it's really strong, and I like it. And that's Ambassador, which uh, says you card. choose a card. Hate, of all people, how can you hate this card? What do you mean of all people? Explain what the card is, Mark. It says, reveal a card from your hand, return up to two copies of it from your hand to the supply, then each other player gains a copy of it. It's probably too strong. <laughs> it is perhaps the strongest card in the game. For the money, it's the strongest card in the game, without a doubt, because you you can ba- you basically trash two estates and then everyone else gains one at the beginning of the game. But I like, I like cards that subtly make your opponent's hands a little bit worse. Or your, your opponent's deck's a little bit worse. Like, maybe the returning two copies of it from your hand is a bit too much. But just, like, giving someone an estate or giving someone a copper, I think, is really fun. I like I like those kind of subtle interactions. Although, in this particular case, it might be a little too powerful. But it makes it fun. It's, it's generous in the way that Chapel is ruthless. Yeah, yeah. Any honorable mentions for you, Bubba? Yeah, uh... Uh, apprentice apprentice is my first one that one's pretty simple it's uh i think that's from uh your favorite set geesman uh alchemy i was gonna talk about alchemy if you weren't gonna do it no not at not at all because it doesn't cost a potion uh i think it costs five alchemist no apprentice yeah you trash a card from your hand and you draw cards equal to its cost and it also gives you an action, I believe. It does. Uh, wow, that's really good. That's yes, just, it's that's super good. I love this card. Laboratory, same cost. Uh, yeah, just and you get to trash an estate. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. So that's one of them. The second one is Spice Merchant. I love Spice Merchant. Um, the biggest reason I love Spice Merchant is every time I see this card, it's basically you get to trash a copper and you get a lab for four. It lets you trash a copper from your hand or any treasure from any your treasure, hand. Yeah. Uh, and then you get to choose to either draw two cards plus an action or plus two coin and a buy, I think it is. Yes. I think I have that right. Yep. So it's arguably very powerful, but you end up more times than not running out of copper. So you end up having to like actually buy crappy treasure yeah. to keep well, this, this is... spice merchant engine rolling. Well, this is um, the card. This is a card we had in the the Crossroads game with Orion. Yeah, and we oh, really? were discussing it later in that it's such a good early game card, and then such a bad late game card. Totally, <laughs> which makes it oh, it's so true because it's and, it's one of those four buys that's just you got to get it. So, and my strategy in that game was to compensate big discard cards. I had in and I had some oases. And I just couldn't discard enough cards. I couldn't get rid of my spa- my spice merchants that weren't worth anything. It's four costs, so you could remodel it into a gold late game. Yeah, if you have it's one. true. There you go. Yeah, that, More times a, than not, solid... you have to find a way to just get extra buys incorporated into your deck and yeah. just buy coppers. Yeah, yeah. Any from you, Orion? Um, I'm gonna mention tactician. I think it is. That's oh, that's you a discard fun your one. Card a duration, and then the next turn. You draw at plus five cards, plus an action, or something like that. Plus an action and plus a buy, I think. Okay, um, but it just that pattern of like, well, this is a crappy hand, so I'm going to tactician and just have a super hand next turn. Um, in the messy games where you don't have a uh, a nice clean chaining combo. Well, again, it's the epitome of it's better to have one bad hand and one great hand exactly. rather than two mediocre. This is this is the card that proves that. I think is it King's Court. Is that the, the like, triple action? Program? Yeah, yeah, King's so, Court. Uh, okay. I love games and more just like the theory crafting of what if I King's Court a throne room into like some insane combo yeah. and just like 
what could I do with that, right? And just, I'm going to throw in Runic king's court and play market eight times or something yep <laughs> you know? it does make market a lot better <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> yeah and just being able to play a card a bunch of times is fun and i think i the last one i think i have to mention is possession which i know bubba thinks is get out of here but think of, okay think about it this way it's a it's a five cost action card that gives you an it's, extra hand it's it's, possession? it's not a five it's cost. Six it's in a six in a potion. Six in a potion. It's the most. <laughs> it is the most extravagant card. I don't. I don't like possession. That's not why I like. I think it's fantastic. Like it is fantastic because it's one of those cards. Like I you like know what? Screw possess- you guys. I'm just gonna spend my entire <laughs> strategy getting enough buying power to buy possession and just use you guys. You know. Yes. So possession basically lets you take another turn with your opponent's hand or your opponent's deck. But yeah. you gain anything. You but buy. you get anything that you that they buy that you're manipulating. You literally of, possess them. One of my favorite quotes about this card is, "You can't play Dominion well enough, so you're using your opponent's deck <laughs> and you buy possession. That's how you win." <laughs> hey, it's it's a look. If you can play Dominion strategy. well enough to buy a possession early <laughs> enough to use it. You're doing okay. <laughs> also, the reason this card stands out is Matt and I were have talked multiple times about how to build a Dominion implementation online or something. Yeah. And this is the card that just breaks all the rules and it makes it impossible it. to set up any More sort of More than any of the, the mechanics in the later sets. This yeah. one just messes with It you. just messes with all the rules, and you're like, well, all right, now I have to figure out how to tell the computer that you can play with someone else's hand and then you get the cards instead, and you get two turns, but it's still your turn. It's just weird. <laughs> and then you could, like, throne room a king's court into a possession, and it's just insanity. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. That's but, so the dream. What happens, what, what happens if they have a possession in their hand? And could then you... you can possess the next person. Okay, I was wondering if <laughs> but, but don't they possess the next person? Uh, I, don't I don't think remember. you get to play it. I think they get to play it. Oh, so you can like force them to possess right. the next person. So, I, so as we're sitting, I possess you. Yeah. I buy a gold or something, get in my and then you get to possess Mark. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then no he choice. possesses Ben and we have an infinite possession <laughs> circle going around. That's, that's, that's basically insane. It sounds at awful. That point. That's <laughs> we all disappear into the ether. Yeah. We had an interaction the other day that could have gone into an infinite regress, right? Oh, yeah. It had the, the text had a catch on it that prevented oh, okay. it. Okay. I forget what it was. Yeah. Was that the in, um, Diplomat in Concordia? Yes. Is that what we were talking about? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, the Diplomat, Diplomat in Concordia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So that's individual cards. I can, I can I give one more? Okay, fine. Well, we haven't mentioned guilds, and I wanted to make sure that we mentioned a card from every set. Um, so I'll, I'll... Oh, guilds was the least represented set. Out yeah. of the, there were only three out of those ninety-two cards from guilds. Yeah, and I don't have strong feelings about guilds. I think it's solid. It, it's I like, well, I like it more than Cornucopia for a small expansion. Um, but I'll highlight Baker from the Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker series. Nice, yeah. Um, so it's it's plus a card plus an action. Take a, to- a coin token. So cantrip, but you get a coin token. So. Guilds gives this coin token idea, which is, it's a copper, but you can spend it whenever you want. You can hoard them and then spend them all at once or something like that. Yeah. But the other thing it does, and this is why I, I think it's interesting, is it changes the setup to each player takes a coin token at the beginning of the game. So now all of a sudden, instead of having a 3-4 split, you have a 4-4 four, 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 oh. four, four split yeah. or a 4-5 split. Sorry, three, five. Three, three, five. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even a two, six, if you're lucky. That is fascinating. Um, so it just, it's one of those things where I think these later sets just bring out how robust Dominion as an, a, a game system is. That these little tweaks end up just like open opening whole new worlds. Just a simple thing of every player has a coin token at the beginning of the game changes the entire game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it says a lot to, first of all, how the absurd amount of thought that Donald X. Vaccarino has put into this game. Like, if you read through his designer diaries and his notes and stuff which on the fantastic. expansion, which are really well, well done, 
it's insane how like how far ahead in expansions he was when the when he released the original game. He had already planned out like the first four or five or six or something, right? Wow. The first few. Yeah, he had through Dark Ages and Guilds. I think he had through Guilds roughly planned. There was a lot of kind of changing and reshaping. Yeah. But he had cards through Guilds, which was the like eighth expansion. And just reading through how he talks about the game, like he is operating on an incredibly high level of play. And I think that's, I guess that's part of what makes Dominion really special is that it's a really easy game to learn. Like anyone could learn Dominion. There's like a, two rules basically until you get to weird, <laughs> weird card interactions. But the, the amount of depth with all the interactions with the cards is really extraordinary. You know, up there with any, you know, any big card game like Magic or something. Let's go very quickly around the table. Let's start with Orion this time and end with Bubba. Favorite expansion? I'll go Prosperity. Matt? Hinterlands. Intrigue. I'll say Seaside. Bubba? Also Hinterlands. We got two Hinterlands here. Okay, what do you guys like about Hinterlands? Because to me, it seems like a nice, solid expansion. So, the what first, did, the, did it add any mechanisms? Um, no. Nope. Um, so its big addition was on gain and on buy effects, which some of them are really interesting. I, I don't think that's one of the more game-breaking. So thematically, it's considered a follow-up to Seaside, which is interesting because it doesn't have duration cards. Um, yeah, that's what I love about Seaside. Duration cards are really fun. Do you remember why Donald considers it a follow-up to Seaside, Bubba? Not at all. I I mean I have my very I have a very specific reason for liking it. Yeah, good. Uh, good. And that's that's because crossroads. Most no, <laughs> definitely crossroads. <laughs> Almost all of the cards in in this set in Hinterlands are extremely strategic. Very very few of them are straightforward. Almost all of them you have to think about why you're getting it specifically. Um, a lot of that has to do with a lot of the cards having discard on them. So like Oasis. Oasis is, I would say, eight games out of ten, a pretty bad card. But there are games where it shines because you can use it in a very special way. Like Farmland is another one that we went over earlier. It's it's a weird card. It costs six and gives you two points and provides you with one upgrade. It, it's kind of weird, but there are situations where all of these cards can be super useful. That's why I like it. Yeah, yeah I can see like, that. I'm looking at the, the list of cards here, and I'm just seeing card after card. Like, yeah, that's a pretty good card. Yeah, I think Bubba's spot on. I, I, my reason was more just that every card in the set feels enticing to me. And, and that's one of the things that, about Dominion is I love looking at the kingdom when it first gets laid out. I'm like, okay, what am I going to go for? And I always find myself wanting to make these cards work. And I think Bubba gets at the heart of why that is. It's because they are strategic and can be used in very particular ways, but they aren't always good. I'll add just another one that's that's very strategic in this way is Mandarin, which is, which I wish had made our list plus three buying power put a card from your hand back on your deck and then it also has a cool uh game reaction but just having a card that gives you three buying power but you have to put a card back on your deck you run into these interesting situations of like well maybe i can't get a province this turn but i'll sacrifice my gold in my hand now for next turn yeah it's a good point or maybe i have to put a an estate there bummer but you know you got the province this turn yeah, looking at the the set of cards, like I can see now why you guys like it. I just love duration cards, which is why I think Seaside and then Adventures are my favorite expansions. Yeah. But let's talk about this a bit. What are your favorite new mechanisms that were brought out in the expansions? I think mine is is absolutely the Tavern Mat. I hope they make more Tavern Mat cards in the next expansion. I really do like the Tavern Mat. I, I think it's a uh... It's, it's more interesting than duration cards because it's not just arbitrarily the next turn you have it's whenever you want it's like it's at your leisure and it allows for a lot more flexibility in in uh, in when you want to play the card when you want to activate its ability and I, I think giving that choice to 
the player is is a it's a great experience and it makes for a, a much tighter game yeah and it just feels good to be able to like hold something back i guess the same kind of thing matt was just talking about with mandarin of just holding a card back now in order to create a better hand later on is really yeah. cool do you have a favorite bubba my favorite is basically just the way the game has evolved to incorporate trashing cards in basically different ways. <laughs> so like in the base set, and even Intrigue for that matter, it was just, hey, you trash this card. Um, the most unique way was Rebuild. Uh, and it's part of the reason I like Rebuild so much. But like the introduction of Island, different ways to trash specific cards like like Spice Merchant. Uh, as we talked about earlier, all the new rebuilds, uh, basically anything that trashes cards in a new, unique way is is my favorite part of the game. Interesting. Do you have a favorite, Orion? I don't know. I just like how the, he keeps coming out with new expansions and they're all just a little bit different. It's still Dominion, but it's a little twist. You know, you uh, Hinterlands has all this on buy, on gain, on discard effects, and then you have to factor that in. I don't know, just all the different variety i guess in how a set can kind of have a theme and still fit into the dominion hole yeah yeah i'm curious to see what they do with the next expansion coming out in a couple of weeks all i know is it has vampires nocturne right? nocturne matt do you have a favorite mechanism let me say oh no um i'm gonna go with landmarks from empires wait what i'm gonna go with landmarks I don't know what those are. From I don't even remember what those are. So, right. So, I, I've played the later sets more than any of you, I think. And as I play them, and as I thought about things for Dominion Week, I think the recurring theme for me is that Dominion is like a, a platform. I, I think it, it's so extensible. It could go in so many different interesting ways. So, landmarks are one of those ways. Basically, it's a card that affects scoring at the end of the game. And it's just as you know, game-breaking as you would think it could be. So, for example, the Bandit Fort, when scoring, minus two victory points for each silver and gold that you have. Oh. Um, so it's, it just changes the game. So the, the joy of Dominion, I think, is looking at a new kingdom and saying, what am I going to do? And then everything we've talked about goes into that. You know, there's so many different things to like about the strategy, but... At its core, it's looking at a new, new kingdom and saying, what am I going to do? And there's infinite replayability in that. But these events, kind of, or sorry, these uh, landmarks kind of take it to another level. So honestly, it's kind of a potential for me because this is the latest expansion. I haven't played it that much. We haven't played it at all together. I've never played with landmarks. I've played Empires probably three times. Yeah, we, we played it one night just, just for the p- potential and how it shows how extensible Dominion is. I'll go with that. <laughs> I like I like the events from that just from that one play, but this like extra mechanism that just everyone can participate in. I remember like wedding something that get, gave you extra money or something like that. Yeah, the events were interesting. I'm not a big fan of the events because it just creates almost too many decision points. Yeah, so the event is just something you can spend money on any turn. It, it's basically like a one time use action that you can pay for. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm with you on there. Like, I like them. I think they're interesting. But it kind of siphons too much of the of the game into that event. Yeah, yeah. Landmarks just change the landscape. It's just you're playing the same game, but at the, you know, at the end, there's a tweak on scoring. Yeah, well, it's the same thing as we talked about these alternate victory condition cards. Yeah, that just creates totally. a completely alternate scenario for the game. We got to play with that. Uh, yeah, no, we, we only played it a couple of times and then we were like, oh, we didn't do the, the biggest thing that this set offers. Yeah, we got we to gotta play out these landmarks now before Nocturne comes out. We don't know anything about Nocturne other than that I know it has vampires. Well, what do you know yeah. about it? So it has night cards, which I think, what do they do? I think Wait, they... is it becoming slowly? Is Dominion turning into Mage Knight? <laughs> Is that its final form? That would that would knock it out of my top three. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would make it fine. It would just be fine then. Which would be a shame. Because it's such a great game and then it would just be fine. Wow, Bubba with the callback. <laughs> Night 
cards are played after the buy phase. Ooh, that's interesting. Who knows what that'll be like? Um, we don't know anything else. That's all we know. Also, it also introduces boons and hexes. Fun. It, it, I'm sure it's going to be fun. Are those like alternate curses? Alternate curses, maybe. Well, um, I don't like know it's if a they're good thing. Oh, I mean the first. No, thing I, I think they're of... effects. Huh. Um, oh, so like space. maybe you always have a six card hand type deal. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Like I and I don't even know if they're iron. permanent or if they're limited run that, or what. But that's what it sounds like, though. Interesting. When is it, do cool. we have the date on when that's coming out? Like uh, November. Up until a couple weeks ago, it was October. Yeah. I have it on pre-order. Nice. I'm gonna get a bunch of games as soon as this releases. And we will definitely be doing a review of that when it comes out. Any final remarks you guys want to say about our beloved Dominion? Fishing Village sucks. Fishing Village is a great <laughs> card, and you should shut your mouth. Fine. Fishing Village Fine. is like okay. every other Dominion card. Are we doing dishonorable mentions or not? Oh, cards we hate? Yeah, yeah. we can Ooh, do that. Yeah. Okay. Any card that BCP likes is awful. That's mostly what? true. <laughs> okay. Jester. Monster, BCP, I Dominion, don't like Jester. Mean attack oh, cards. sorry. Sometimes I, I don't that. like mean attack cards. I'm sorry. I like the, the attack cards that I like are attack cards... That I can chain with. Familiar is your favorite card. Brabble, rabble, rabble. I don't know what familiar is. Rabble. Oh, what a great card. I, 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 I have this reputation for loving cards that cause other people pain. I don't actually like. No, you are you like games. chaining. You like chaos. I like chaining. I probably like action cards more than anyone. You mean attack cards? Or ac- attack cards, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, dishonorable mentions, though. Sea Hag. Awful. So bad. Torturer, the worst. I like it for the draw. I think it's interesting that the the attack cards in Seaside are devastating. For such a fun set, Ghost Ghost Ship Ship and Sea Hag are brutal. That's true. One of the nastiest in the game. Yeah. Which set has Pirate Ship in it? Uh, Seaside. That is a stupid card. Like it's can be strong, but God, I hate that. (laughs) That's another one that I love. I just I want to make it work. (laughs) Well, I just hate attack cards that just slow down the game, basically. Like torture, or sea hag, or what's the what's the attack card in alchemy? Familiar, familiar. Oh, so the worst. Orion and I that summer, yeah, Lindsay on Co was yeah. visiting. Yep, and we had a game. It's the only game of Dominion that I haven't finished. Did we just <laughs> we familiar? I think we didn't realize that the curse deck was limited to. Oh, and yeah. minus played one with like 40 <laughs> curses instead of 20 or something. So all three of us have familiars. Our decks were ginormous. <laughs> oh, no. It was, it was it was a three-player game of Dominion that went like an hour and a half. I think oh, only one goodness. of us had positive points. Wow. <laughs> it was just yeah. terrible. That game is the reason I hate familiar. Familiar is horrible. Because it's just, <laughs> it's just a replacement card that gives everyone a curse, right? Yeah. That's really yeah. good. It's horrible. It's strong. It's very it's, strong. Yeah. I mean, a player yeah, experience. Yeah. <laughs> No, I hate it too. I, would, yeah. I, I generally hate it. attacks. Man, what else do we say? I wish say? Saboteur. I know they got rid of it, but Saboteur is so bad. Treasure Map. Oh, I love that card. Treasure Map. Yeah, like, Treasure uh, Map's awesome. Treasure Map. It's awesome. fun. I I don't personally like it, but I, it, I I do see that it's a very fun card when it works. I, it, it's just raw fun. It's so dumb, but it's it is fun. Right. Lookout is a genuinely bad card. I, like, I always try to make that card work. I've never. Is that the one where you draw one? Track you draw, one and discard you draw one? three cards. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that's not bad. Or you you put one on your deck, you discard one, and you trash one. Yeah, but the it's one of those is, cards that's only good early game. You, well, the problem is you have to do all three. Like, yeah, you're just locked into it every time you play it, and it's. I never want to play it because what if I draw three really good cards? Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of cards in. Uh, Dark Ages that are really annoying, but Dark Ages is this weird mystery to me. It's scary. It's, it's the scariest scary. expansion. It is because the interactions there are so much more game. complex. It changes the game so much. Yeah, it's bonkers. More complex than anything else. I think it's like it's advanced mode for Dominion. Like I don't recommend buying Dark Ages. Well, that'd be the last so, one I would recommend, one. and it's not because it's my least favorite. Well, no, second to last. Cornucopia. No, I'll <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, okay. Alchemy. Good. Okay. Uh, ben, you're back. In, you're you're back in my this good. You're back in my good graces. <laughs> um, yeah, not not because it's my least favorite one, but just because it's it's like brooding. It's almost like a noir. It's just brooding and slow. And it's complicated. It's we complicated. played a game with Dark Ages, and I just was staring at the cards, like, "What do I even do with these?" How yeah, do it I was it was way together? too late in the evening to be playing Dark Ages. <laughs> you gotta have a, some coffee in you. You gotta be alert, warm up your mind with another set first. It's it like, it is Dominion on a hard of mode. Prosperity first, so you just like buy everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you play Dark Ages, and you're like, "All right, now I have to work hard." Yeah. <laughs> I've got an interesting one. What's a card that you really wanted to be good? I I know we've said that about a lot of cards, but like, what it, what's the one that stands out to you the most that you're like, I really wish this was a good card, but it's not. It I'll just go with wish. treasure map, harem, harem, yeah, yeah. adventure. Mine is scout. I really wanted scout to be good for so long and i kept trying to play that's the one where you like look at the next four and discard victory cards or something uh, you draw the victory cards uh, so i really kept i i i think it it has potential to be situationally it'd good be great with crossroads with like nobles or like with a lot of those you could scout the crossroads ahead yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly it a very, very particular set of cards it's just not going to happen. In I think if they if they made it replace itself, it'd probably be okay. Because it, as it is, it's yeah. just one action plus one action, and then you get your scout. Yeah, I think it just needs to cost three or that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a little underpowered. Oh yeah, four is pretty. High. Another just random card that I love. Uh, well, there's a lot of cards that I just love for because we've had certain experiences playing them, and so we've kind of built up almost these like inside joke memes around them. Yeah, it's totally. like council room. Everybody wins. Yes. <laughs> you know, or uh, city, and whenever we play that, Matt sings the yeah. we, we built, built this. this city. Yeah, right. And so just things like that. That we built this city. They're reminders of these past games and these past shared experiences, and it's just remembering other good times playing Dominion while you're playing this great game. Dominion's really just about family. It's about bringing people together. It's about family life. Time. Gold. Provinces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was it that Bless used to say? Well, I think that's a good place to stop our Dominion discussion. Thanks for listening, everyone. This was a great first episode of our Dominion kick- uh, side podcast. Well, Tune in I next week. I look forward week. to the next episode. <laughs> to the next one? Remember, it's the, it's the Matthew Giesman solo Dominion slash hockey You're podcast. Be on there. Occasionally. I'll stop by. Okay. I'll be like, you know, on the kids shows when they have like the, the Muppet friend who stops by for five minutes every episode. I'll be like that. <laughs> what if what if he just did a half hour podcast each week on one card? I could do it. Could you talk for half an hour on one card? Now I think Even if it was I'm 15 starting minutes. to think you're kind of serious about this. <laughs> we shouldn't really make it a Patreon goal. Pond. Is it good? Oh, man. Anyway, thank you all for listening to us ramble and fight about Dominion. If you haven't played Dominion, go do that now. What are you waiting for? Yeah, it's it's really a classic. I, again, I, I wrote this in my review. I think it's one of the few games from the last 10 years that'll be around in, you know, when we're old. I think it'll 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 have legs, I think. And just the only thing that game. might stop it from doing that is the price point to get in. Yeah, but like yeah, the the base set is cheap. But, but but yeah, the base set you'll get what fifty to one hundred games out of it before you feel like you need an expansion. It's it's not in yeah. twenty years they're going to release you know a completely new edition that just has you know a hundred of the best kingdom cards. Yeah, they'll keep re releasing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one last thing. I got to give a shout out. My brother Rajo got married this uh, last weekend. Woo-hoo! And uh, I know he listens to the podcast. So oh, yeah. Congratulations, Rajul. Congratulations. Rajul. Good job. Uh, <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Way to marry that girl. All right. I'm actually stopping the podcast now. Thanks for listening. Check us out at thethoughtfulgamer.com for more Dominion Week stuff. Tomorrow we've got stuff. Uh, oh, wait, no. This podcast is going up Wednesday. Friday we have things. There have already been things yesterday and the day before. Time is weird when you record something in the past. 
<laughs> and also all other kinds of board game stuff. Check me out on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook. Don't forget to rate and review this on iTunes. And if you enjoyed this, check out the Patreon page. Again, we have some really awesome rewards there. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye. Adios. Peace out. Peace. Ah! <laughs> oh, that was like a squawk. <laughs> 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 <laughs>